Let's take a minute and talk about how you can tell a lot about an element by looking at the periodic table. I'm showing you an example here of what iron would look like on the periodic table. And if you look at this box, this number at the top, 26, is the atomic number. It tells you the number of protons. This is the element symbol, and underneath is the element name. Not all periodic tables have the name on it, but a lot of them will. This number here is the mass of the element. And we talked on, in the last video about how the mass is made up of the number of protons and the number of neutrons. But why is that number not a whole number? Because we said that one proton was one amu and one neutron was another amu. But if you look at the periodic table, they're all decimals. You can't have half of a proton. And the reason this happens is because of isotopes. An isotope is an atom with the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. So that gives them a different mass. It doesn't change their charge, because neutrons are neutral. It's important to remember that the number of protons determines the atom's identity. That iron has 26 protons is what makes it an iron atom. The number of protons only change if an atom goes through a nuclear reaction and it becomes a new element. The number of electrons change a lot when ions are formed and bonds are made, and the number of neutrons also change with different isotopes. So let's talk about average atomic mass, because that's what's shown on the periodic table. On this one, this 12.0112, and they're in AMUs, tells you the average mass of a carbon atom. And it's the weighted average of the masses of all the isotopes. And a weighted average just means that if there's more of them, then it's a larger percentage. So this weight here is so close to 12 because 98.9% of carbon atoms have a mass of 12. But 1.1% of atoms have a mass of 13, where they have one extra neutron. So we don't just average the two numbers together, you know, 12 and 13 will give you an average of 12.5. We weight them so that, based on how much of the isotope in a sample would be that mass. So because 98.9% would be 12, the average atomic mass on the periodic table would be much closer to 12. It's kind of like how in some classes, certain assignments will be weighted one way, like tests might be 35% of your grade and classwork might be 20%. So the average for the tests has more impact on the final grade. Let's talk about how to count protons, electrons, and neutrons. And it'll be frequently abbreviated as PEN, protons, electrons, and neutrons. The atomic number tells you the number of protons. And remember that if we're talking about an atom, it's going to be electrically neutral. So if it has 26 protons, it has to have 26 electrons so that each positive is balanced out by one negative. And the mass number is the number of protons plus neutrons. It's really important that you understand that mass number and average atomic mass are not the same thing. The mass number is the protons and neutrons for one atom, one isotope. The average atomic mass is the average of the mass of all the isotopes. It's like comparing your weight versus the average weight for everyone your age. They're not going to be the same. Let's do some examples. First example we have is nickel. And it's written in hyphen notation. It says nickel-59. And hyphen notation has a name and then a mass. So we need to look at a periodic table and find nickel. And we can see nickel is right here. And you can see that its atomic number is 28. We also see the average atomic mass is 58.71, but we're not going to use that number. Because I told you the mass of this isotope is 59. So for our nickel, we have that our protons 
is equal to 28. And because it's electrically neutral, then it has to have the same number of electrons. Now we have to find out our neutrons. We have the mass number is 59. That's given in the hyphen notation right here. And we know we have 28 protons. So if we do 59 minus 28, we can see that we have 30 one neutrons. So this particular isotope of nickel has 28 protons, 28 electrons, and 31 neutrons. Let's look at lithium-7. And you might notice in my examples that we're going to do lithium-7 and lithium-6. And they are going to be different because they're different isotopes. Which means they'll have the same number of protons, same number of electrons, but different number of neutrons. So let's look on the periodic table and find lithium. And we can see lithium over here. And we see that it has an atomic number of 3. So that means that our lithium has 3 protons and 3 electrons. How many neutrons does it have? Well, its mass is 7 which means this 3 plus however many neutrons has to add up to 7. So we can tell that there are 4 neutrons. Now let's talk about lithium-6. We know it's still going to have 3 protons because that atomic number of lithium did not change. It's still going to have 3 electrons because it still has to be neutral. The neutrons are now going to be 3 because 3 plus 3 add up to a mass of 6. Let's do one more example with this sulfur 33. Let's find sulfur on our periodic table. It's right here. We can see the atomic number is 16. So we have 16 protons. And we have 16 electrons. For our neutrons, we can do 33 minus 16 to get, so we have 17 neutrons.